Bill's Lake today with England internationals Billy Flowers and Jamie Londers. Bill's got a lovely 20 pounder here. What would you catch that on mate? I uh, just had this on a single zig at distance. Good man, well that's exactly what we're going to show you today. These boys are absolutely superb at accurate distance fishing. Jamie's got a fish in the sack as well. We're going to show you some tips on how you can fish best and accurately at distance. Just a pick of the bunch from the night. I think I had three or four through the night. Spotting over zigs at distance, which we're going to show you today. This was part of a double take. With a bit of luck today, we should catch a few more and get a few for the camera. Another fish at Lord's Fishery. It's really kicking off now on the zig rigs. We're catching them at distance. I've just this second landed one, which is down in the net there. Look, looks a low 20. So I was I left that there before we unhooked it, got the rod out straight away, and no soon as I got the anger on it, it was away again. And we're playing this one now. Jamie's behind me getting another rod out. Because when it when it's kicking off with the zigs, you want to get on them as quick as you can and you get bites very quickly as you can see. Right, I'm here today at Lily Fisheries, the Lord's venue. Just at land this lovely 19 pound mirror on a piece of foam, fished accurately just over 100 yards. So we slip her back and hopefully let's get another one. Today. It's been really, really hectic. Another one caught on the zigs. All, all fish been caught to that zigs over 100 yards. I'm actually going to have to keep the rods in there so we can actually show you exactly how we've been catching today. It's been that hectic, we haven't had a chance to go for it. So I'm going to get this fish back, go for the tactics, and I'm sure it'll be a bit more later on. Well, I finally managed to pin Bill down in his swim because he's been catching fish all day. Just want to apologise for the noise in the background, there's a tractor ploughing his field in the background there, so apologies about that. But I want to talk to, to Bill a little bit about his rigs, because obviously he's fishing at distance with zigs, and zigs are prone to tangles, so just wanted to talk to him a little bit about that. Firstly, Bill, how do you stop tangles when fishing at distance? The idea with stopping the tangles, we've got this uh, an anti-tangle sleeve here. Right, Basically okay. that, that stops the, the, uh, the zig itself actually getting caught around the lead, because a lot of times it can get caught around here, and that can tangle up, cause you all set, and you, you can lose depth, and they just ain't going to sit right. Basically, that, that always kicks it away from the lead. You see right, that sort okay. of angle there, it's perfect, it's always kicking it away, so it shoots straight up. Yeah. Uh, secondly, because obviously the, de the depth of the zig, like today, with using extremely yeah, long, long like 16 foot today, yeah. seems to be the depth. Uh, I'm actually casting off a uh, unhooking mat, so I'm, like, I'm laying the hook bait down first, yeah. Obviously watching behind me, make sure it's all clear. Yeah, of course. And it just sort of like curling it on the unhooky mat and then casting off the mat. So it's obviously it's not getting tangled in no. flight. And then as, as you actually cast, as, before I hit the, the water, I actually take the, obviously just take the sting out of it. You, and you actually see your lead hit the water. And also if you look carefully enough, you can see the, the actual piece of foam in the Right. Of, and you can actually, so I'm, it, I think it's more a personal preference. I know that it's not tangled because yeah. you, you sort of get, you're trapping you got, the lead, yeah, you sort of it trap it, but you, you got to be really, you got to sort of know what you're looking for and watch the lead closely. But you actually see two little splashes, yeah. like you'll see the lead go in, and then just like maybe a second late, you might just see a bit of foam. Yeah. But you know that's kicked away nicely. And is it's that because no you're tangled. trapping the lead before it's it because hits I'm, the surface? Yeah, just before it hits the surface, I'm just literally trapping it, just as if you were spot, like just taking the sting out of it. Yeah. And then the lead obviously goes down nicely. And then the, the zig is flipping up perfect and presented perfectly. Nice, and that's obviously causing less disturbance as well as it hits the water. It's not crashing in, is exactly, it? Exactly, so. yeah, because a lot of the time you fit, you obviously, to the, how hectic it is today, they must be 
out there in big shoals. So obviously yeah. you don't want to be crashing. It's, it's a four ounce leg because obviously we're fishing distance. Yeah. Um, and we've got the tournament shape one, which is flying out perfect and staying straight, which is keeping the zig like behind it perfect as well. So. Nice, nice. Well, let's just have a look at the actual the, the rigs itself. I mean, you've got a, you've got a leader behind that. That looks quite thick, and that's one of our yeah. tapered leaders. Yeah, is that you yeah. using that for a reason? That, that's one because, like I say, we've, where we're fishing at distance. Yeah. That's obviously going to that stops all crack offs. And yeah. that, again, that's whilst me taking the sting out of it, the leader is exactly what it does. That takes the sting out of it, and it allows the line to obviously not break and that because yeah. a lot of time you. You see people casting, like they're trying to hit the horizon, but yeah. then they wonder why it's cracked off because they've got no leader tie. So that's on. an absolute must, really, for distance. One hundred percent, yeah. Uh, you need you need some sort of leader on there. Okay. Um, this this is spot on because you know what I mean it just runs. It's, it's you got the the line, the twelve pound sub line with a with a sub leader. Yeah. And it it, it just sits lovely. The knots all nice and small. And yeah, it all I just blends that. in. You know what I mean? It, it's spot on. It is really. But it's not just for zig fishing. That's that's for all my fish. Yeah, like, I always have a leader. Casting. Yeah, without a doubt. Cool. And what knot are you actually using? It looks nice and tidy. What knot is that? Yeah, it's, it's just a um, it's just a grinner, like a back to back grinner knot. Right. Okay. So, so you literally just form forming two loops and then joining them together, nice and slow. Yeah, basically, and then just make plenty of saliva and just pulling them tight. And then okay. that's, it's spot on, isn't it? You, you goes for the rings perfect and that, and it's, it's a nice neat knot. It doesn't cause you no grief. Great stuff, and that's running through what looks like a lead clip there. Yeah, that's. I know there's no tail rubber though. Yeah, there's there's a reason behind. It's not I haven't forgot it. <laughs> it's uh, literally because zig fishing is is totally different to normal fishing. Obviously, with these real long uh, zigs as well as we are today. Yeah. It's like I did mention earlier, like when you're landing fish on your own. Like for instance, we've got like a 16 foot zig on, and obviously rod's only like 12 foot long. Yeah. So if you can imagine, you you clip. Say you had the lead swinging there, you'd like you'd say you had the rubber locked on so the lead can't dislodge. Yeah. You've got your lead like at the top end of your the your top ring of your right and you can't yeah. physically reel anymore and you you still got like a sixteen foot zig. Yeah. One to, to net fish is hard. Like it makes it so awkward on your own. So with with that, like one benefit is we can actually reel the lead clip through your rig, through your eyes of your rod. Yeah. So you're actually shortening the zig if it makes sense. Right, so okay. obviously to make, allow for netting. Yeah. Uh, two because it it's got a good few purposes. Two because like the weed, uh, the, as soon as the lead drops, obviously it allows the fish to come off in the wall, allowing us to land the majority of what we've caught today. Yeah. And uh, the main reason as well is when you're fishing zig, any form of zig, but more long zigs than anything. Is you're not actually playing the lead right. because a lot of people forget you've got this like four, imagine a four ounce lead dangling about there yeah. and 16 foot behind it that's where the actual fish is like with the hook in yeah. so you're actually playing the lead yeah. the whole time the fish is doing whatever it wants behind right. so and it, and it uses the, the lead to its advantage to actually pull the hook out so I mean like the amount of people that lose them under the rod tip well, I'm sure it's because they haven't dropped the lead yeah. and it's as simple as like always I'm doing today is just tying it off with a bit of PVA tape yeah. and that like it's perfect for casting, it's not going to come off on the cars. But you know, secondly, and you, you find that even if you just want to re, redo your rod, you, you're still going to gain your leg. But obviously, if you get a bite, the leg comes off, yeah, and, and the fish is in. Do you know what I mean? For the sake of losing the leg, it's, yeah. it's definitely yeah. the one, yeah. Okay, cool. That's, that's obviously running through to that handy tangle sleeve that we've already talked about, yeah. Um, what, what line are you using here? Is that, I look, saw that it might be engage, yeah, yeah, it's just a 12 pound engage, yeah. Um, like I say, with the tangle sleeve, which that's nice just a normal set. Yeah, it, it, to be honest, it's, it's like, obviously with zig fishing, you want something that's obviously going to be as clear as you can because obviously it's sitting right up in the water. Yeah. And the 12, 12 obviously allows us to come, I mean, we're pulling through the weed, fine. It's not, yeah. the, the couple of fish that we have lost has just been down to hook balls. Yeah. It's not actually the line snapping, so, cool. so I mean, you, you can pull that through. I mean, we've pulled through some, some fear weed yeah, today, yeah, yeah. so we, we've landed them. Uh, so it's just 12 pound engage. Yeah, um, running through. We've got a, this is a zig aligner on here. Right, okay. Uh, which is the piece that's just a piece of foam that sits in the back of it. That's just that's, to mimic an insect or something, isn't that's it? That's exactly what it is, yeah. yeah. And the, 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 the beauty of that as well, you get the perfect sort of angle that you everyone sort of wants or yeah. that everyone talks about, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. That, that angle, it just sits lovely in the water. And then obviously you've got the uh, ever faithful the size eight wide gape. I mean perfect. that's that's nice now as soon as they hit that. Yeah. Um, and obviously the foam that like, is giving you the buoyancy, what the zig rig does, and it pulls it up. You know, so yeah. Excellent. I know it's with your foam. You do a little trick. You, you're soaking it in betalin. Yeah, yeah. I've got. I've got um, I always have it pre-soaked. So like these, these have been oh, yeah. soaked for, for months now. I just always have a pot of uh, pre-soaked foam. Nice. Um, but also be, before I cast, 
Right, so that's, that's a bit of pre-soaked, but before I cast, I'll also glug it back in some vitamin, just yeah. to give it that little extra bit more. So as soon as it hits the water, it's that scent pulling it light. I'm sure it sort of goes down, and like I'm open. Well, my theory is the scent pulls them straight to yeah. it. But I would say I always pre-soak it. Like I'll leave that soaked for as well as long as I need them now. So yeah. Good man. Well, it's obviously and worked today, isn't it, mate? Really, yeah, definitely. Really, really well. It's uh. We've eventually had to get the rods in, haven't we, yeah, just to, uh, to talk through it. So, yeah, it's been pretty hectic today. Good man. Well, now I've pinned you down, you can get this one back out. We're going to go and have a look at some more tips from Jamie on how he fishes at distance. And uh, you never know, you might catch another one, eh? Yeah, hopefully, mate. I'm going to show you a, a long distance cast. In our matches, it's something that I've sort of taught myself over the years. I did have a go with Terry Edmonds and Hutchie and all on the occasion but when the fish are showing at distance it's a bit frustrating if you can't reach them so to start you off I'm going to show you a cast always have the lead level with a spigot so this is how I start I then set my right foot like this rod goes back like this and it's quite important that I have no movement on that lead because I don't want to slow that cast down. And with that drop, it compresses the rod. And this arm comes as high in the air as I can. And when I come forward, I want to pull this arm down as quick as I can on the way over. So if I show you. Now I've done the cast, I'm going to show you the tools I use. It's a 13 foot rod, it's a three and a half pound test curve. It's a nice powerful rod, but it's, it's nice and tippy as well for playing fish. It's then 12 pound main, main line, which is sub line. It's then a sub line tapered leader, which is 40 pound, but where leaders are banned, we do sub line tapered leaders on the end of 12 pound line as well, so it's all in one. It's then a four ounce distance lead with a big pit reel, which is spooled up to the max. It might sound silly, but a finger stall is a must when casting at distance. Your finger might get wet and you don't realize and you end up cutting it on the cast, so the finger stall will protect it at all times. Another 20, I'll show you. It's just short of 22, another one landed on the zig rig. What a day's fishing so far. A look at that, another 20 pounder. Well happy with that result. Puck a lovely dark fish, exactly how carp should be. Absolutely immaculate. I'll slip her back, let's hopefully have another one.